Welcome to episode number 43 of the Silver Lined Relaunch. And today I am so excited to be bringing you a conversation that is much needed, unfortunately, from younger kids to older adults. And my guest, Felicia Boracolo, is a certified life coach. She is an athlete, a bikini competitor. She has a podcast and she is an expert in brain rewiring. And she's gonna help us understand about the body and about the images that we have of our own bodies. And I know that already the alarms for many of us are going off. So sit right down and get ready and let the conversation begin. You're listening to the Silver Lined Relaunch, and I'm your host, Hilary DeCesar, award-winning entrepreneur and transitional coach. Each week, I'll invite you to tune into inspirational stories, revealing how you too can turn ordinary experiences into the extraordinary. Feeling stuck? I'll share step-by-step -step strategies to fuel your ability to experience a life where silver linings are both abundant and possible. Hello and welcome back to the Silver Lined Relaunch. And today I have with me Felicia Bracolo. And it's going to be a story that probably resonates with a lot of people out there. And also the inspiring words and advice and ways that Felicia ends up giving us to kind of guide us on our journey. It's really, it's heartfelt, it's touching, and I'm so excited to have you on the show today. So welcome, Felicia. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Well, so I want to start with, um, you know, relaunches. There are some people who say I've got hundreds of them. For some, it's, you know, your significant few. Tell us about what really stands out for you in your relaunch and the journey that you have come so far with. So my biggest kind of relaunch in my life, my biggest, the, the thing that kind of started that really changed everything else after that for me started with um, my relationship with food and my body image. So when I was younger, I, um, I got so into healthy, healthy eating that it was unhealthy. Um, I was not overweight at all, thin. Nobody would ever know that I had any issues with food, but I was constantly thinking about it, obsessed thinking about it, going on every single possible diet that I could try. Um, paleo, keto, fasting. I had fasted for, I think it was like 36 hours at one point, And I ended up passing out on the floor, um, just doing everything that I could to try to lose weight and get the, this ideal body because I thought I would be happier and I thought my life would be better. And I thought, you know, I would have better relationships. And, and I just thought that being skinny was the answer mm -hmm. <laughs> to everything that would, that would make me happy. Mm -hmm. And going through that, that's when I found coaching and I found the life coach school. And I started to learn so many things, which I'm excited to tell you about all of the things, but that's what really taught me, um, first and foremost, that there was nothing wrong with me for being obsessed with food, that this was part of, you know, not that long ago, we were having to find food in the forest and our brains are designed to always be looking for food and be thinking about food for our survival and, and learning that instead of beating up on myself all the time and thinking that there was something wrong with me, that was in fact the thing that was keeping me from my goal and keeping me stuck in this cycle. Um, so that was my biggest. So you're, what you're saying now is, and I think that so many people, you know, uh, especially media pressures, everything that comes at us, right. is like, you know, stay thin, stay thin, thin is, you know, beautiful. And, um, I, I'm loving these days with the fuller models, the, you know, the, the real, right. We're getting back to like, what's really real. And I right. have two daughters and a son and 
it, it's interesting because my son, um, I have, I have like a, a lean body type, right? My dad is very lean. My mom was very lean and my daughters are more, you know, that they've got the, the rounder They're They're skinny. They're, they're thin there, but my son is like, you know, the super thin person. And I know that growing up with, you know, two daughters like this, you had to be so careful with the words that you said, because if you made one comment about something, it was like, you know, do I look fat? Am I fat? Am I, you know, do do I look fat in this? And it is, it's, it's a tough place to be because we're so sensitized to it. Right. And when you're talking about fasting for 36 hours and you're, you're obsessed with food and I, I love Felicia, I love what you said about, you know, that we used to, you know, this is all we did all day. It was just like, you know, trying to make sure that we could eat. Right. right. And now that we have for, you know, most of us, we have the ability to eat, you know, whenever we want. Right. And a lot of it is fast food, any food, right. We can just, we have food readily available. When you said that you started to notice this, when did you start to notice like, hmm, I, I'm starting to really think about food a lot? Um, I think I was definitely like in denial for a while about it. Like, oh, this is healthy, right? Me like wanting to work out all the time and me wanting to eat super mm-hmm. healthy. I was definitely like, oh, this, this, is, this is a good thing, right? It's mm-hmm. helping me become a healthier person. And I think I noticed, I mean, honestly, passing out from fasting was a great, (laughs) was a great time to notice, okay, maybe this isn't actually, maybe I've taken it too far. Right. Right. Exactly. And then, and then learning, I mean, when I came to the life coach school, it was because I wanted to lose weight. I still, at that point didn't realize I was still trying to lose weight and like get abs. That was like always the goal was to have abs and learning that work about, you know, loving my body and learning about everything going on in my brain is what made me realize like, oh, the issue isn't that I can't get abs. The issue is all the bull. Can I, what can I say? Yes. Yeah, you can. <laughs> all of the bullshit. It's okay. Go for it. <laughs> it was all the bullshit going on in my mind. That was the issue. And I, and I had, I, I only found it because I wanted to lose weight so bad. And I'm so thankful that, that I learned that, oh, wait, I'm not going to be happy when I lose weight. I'm going to be happy when I learn how to change the way that I'm thinking. So that's really what made me realize that. Okay. So I remember, um, last summer I was sitting on a beach and there were, I think it was, uh, a a mom and her daughter sitting next to me and the daughter looked like she was like eight years old. And she comes up and the mom says, she she was, she comes up, you know, the mom's sitting there and she says, you know, um, uh, the mom says, Hey, you know, have you eaten lunch? And she's like, Oh, I'm not hungry. And she said, well, you haven't eaten anything since breakfast. You know, you got to have lunch. And she said, no, 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 I really don't want lunch. I'll just have dinner. And we're talking like eight years old. And the mom says, um, no, you're going to have some lunch and I'll order it. You know, do you want a burger? And she's like, fine, get me whatever. Well, the burger came and I thought this was such a, a crazy, you know, cause I've seen this girl running around and swimming and everything. So it wasn't like, you know, she wasn't feeling well and the burger came and she picked at it, like picked the whole thing apart to make it look like she had eaten it, but she hadn't eaten it. It was just spread all over the, the plate. And I thought, you know, this, there's something going on there. There's something. And what what's happening is that I brought this up to somebody else later that evening. Not, I didn't know these people, but, and they said, yeah, this is now starting to be a thing at a much younger age. These girls are starting to get worried about eating and they tell each other, you know, let's just not eat today it's starting so much younger. And what do you think is, you know, how can we help girls that don't even, they, they can't, 
think about how do I change the way I think? Cause they're young. They're still in their formative years. They're still forming, you know, the brains are still forming. What, you know, what, what are you seeing these days in your coaching business and, you know, just society at large? What do you think? Yeah, I think we can help kids and younger people so much by what we are surrounding them with. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, so much of it was Instagram and online and seeing these bodies that were so perfect. And I remember this one time, it, it wasn't even too long ago. I think I like went to Vegas or something and was looking at all of the women around me. And I was like, wait, they're normal. Like everybody just looks kind of normal. And I expected to get there and see all of these perfect bodies. And I was like, wait, this is just what I'm seeing online. That Every woman has this body, but in real life, it's not like that. So I think that's such a big thing for ourselves, for our kids, for everybody is just to make sure we're surrounding them with healthy ideas of women and you know it's it's healthy to be thin and it's healthy to to not be thin there's so many different in-betweens like right like our body size doesn't determine whether we're healthy or not mm -hmm. and really focusing on that goal um Another story I just remembered is there was a girl that I knew that I was always like, oh my gosh, you have such a great body. And then I found out she had an eating disorder. Mm. And, you know, we, we have in our mind that it's this great thing to be super thin, but I think a lot of times we find out like that it's not healthy, right? It doesn't, it doesn't equate to being healthy and yeah, I think just surrounding oh, our kids with that knowledge is super I, important. I love what you just said. Body size doesn't determine that you're how healthy you are. It doesn't. And, yeah. and you're, you know, the person that you were talking about. I remember um, there was a commercial that I saw, and it was this thin woman, really, you know, all dressed up, guzzy up. It's like she was walking down the red carpet, and she gets halfway down the red carpet and falls over. And it ends up that even though she was thin, she had, you know, high fat blood, all these different things. You don't know. You have no idea what is going on with somebody else. And the greatest example is for those that are watching The Crown right now. And you're seeing Princess Diana, you know, she's in the bathroom throwing up because it's control, right? She, this is the only part of her life right now that she has control over. And so when you, and, and you keep, you, you brought up the, the life school for those that don't know what the life school is. Can you share with us? Because it sounds like this was pretty darn impactful for you. This phase of your life where you went and got certified. Can you, can you share with us kind of what that was like for you? Yeah. So the life coach school teaches, um, it, it's this model and it starts off with our circumstances. So facts that are true. We have a thought about the circumstance, which makes us feel a certain way. Those feelings are driving our actions and all of our actions are what produce the results that we have in our life. So that's kind of the basis of what they teach. Um, and we can plug so many things into that. The one that was really important for me was my thought that I have no self-control around food. I really mm -hmm. felt like, you know, you put me in a room um, with lots of good food and I would just say I had no self-control. Like it was, I almost thought it was cool. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. give me all the food. I have no self-control. But that thought made me feel completely powerless. Mm -hmm. It did not feel good at all to me. And then when I feel powerless, I would eat all the food. Hmm. which just resulted in more of me not having self-control and me proving to myself that that was true. So that's kind of a quick example of what the model is. It shows I, us how. I, totally. I, I get that. And I would even throw in um, an area around the thoughts, create the feelings, these emotions that create the belief, right? And so mm. you had this belief that, hey, I just don't have any control around food. I have no control around food, you know? And I read um, something that you wrote about peanut butter, right? And, you know, it just kind of, it, it, it becomes, it's compulsive. Like it mm -hmm. becomes something that you just keep thinking about and thinking about. And so that's really super interesting. So 
how did you go from having this, you know, I, I, I need to have control. So I'm just going to, you know, I'm, I'm in control because I'm doing it. Was it that you were eating because you're like, I'm in control. I, I now can eat. And then you say, and now I can do whatever I need to do to do, you know, to get rid of it. Is it, is it like that? Or is it just what, what's happening for those that are really trying to figure this out? Yeah, for me, it wasn't, it didn't feel like I was in control at all when I was eating. Mm -hmm. I felt completely out of control. Like Mm -hmm. there were times that I couldn't stop. Um, I wouldn't say it was like an extreme binge. I I didn't go like as far as other people binging, but definitely a similar thing to that where it just felt like I just started eating and kept eating and kept eating and I, and I didn't have full control over myself. Um, but with that, I was definitely an active person. I was thin. I loved working out. Um, there was plenty of times that I would work out like three hours a day. So that was kind of the other piece of it where it was like, this is how I control it is I love working out. Right. And it seems, seems very healthy. I I've definitely had myself convinced that, overeating and working out where it was, wasn't that bad. Hmm. And so at what point, how much were you working out during the week? Um, th- probably like three hours a day. Wasn't like, wasn't uncommon. I mean, sometimes it would just be the gym for like an hour, but if I had more time for sure, like three hours was fun. Mm, three hours was fun. <laughs> so, so then you go and you realize that there's a process to help you with this and you go through this and you decide I'm going to be a coach and I'm going to help people. Mm-hmm. And what are you helping people do now? So the life coaching school, we can help people with literally anything. So the people that I specifically help are typically active people who are overeating because I feel like I was in the depths of that Mm. and can really help people who have that same problem, guide them through it. Um, But at the same time, like we start off with overeating coaching and then we talk about your relationships and then we talk about how to advance your career. And, and it's super fun because we can plug anything in to this model I was telling you about to help people change the way that we're thinking and what actions we're taking in order to create any result in our life. So it's super fun because it applies to really everything. Hmm. And so when you have these people that come in and they say, you know, active eating. Something that I notice is many times people have no idea about nutrition, Mm. about the basis of what is something that is good for you and what is something that potentially could cause you to actually not lose weight. Mm -hmm. Those type, do you get into that as well around, because, you know, we always hear, all right, food portion, like the, you know, make sure you don't have a lot, you know, the, the portion size and then what you're eating and the exercise. And there has to be this fine balance around it, but there also has to be, you can't just have like a small piece of pizza or a small, you know, cheese enchilada. There has to be at some point where you're eating better things. What do you recommend people do for eating healthy, but also eating so that if they are trying to, you know, lose a few pounds, they're going to be able to do that. Yeah. So it's fun because the people that I typically coach know exactly, they know nutrition really well and they know exactly what they should be doing. They're just not doing it. It's that part that, right. It's like, oh, we know we shouldn't eat five pieces of pizza and then cake afterwards, but it's that, it's that self-control. It's all the stuff inside. It's like, I know what I should be doing it, but why can't I do it? Which is so much different. I think like online and, you know, any nutritionist can really help you with what's healthy. Mm-hmm. But I had done that a million times. And I knew exactly how to lose weight. I just couldn't do it. I just kept finding myself overeating. And that's what drove me crazy. It's because I didn't have... I just, I didn't have the self-control. I just couldn't do it. So when someone comes to you and they say, you know, I, I don't have the control, mm-hmm. like, you know, I, I start thinking and I ruminate over something that I, you know, I want to eat. And I, I have to say my big thing is about two o'clock in the afternoon. There are these chips that I absolutely love 
love, love, love. And they're in my cupboard right now. And when they're not in my cupboard, I'm fine. But when they're there, oh my gosh, I think about it. And it's like, what, 222 right now. I'm like, oh, ooh, maybe when I'm done, I'll have some chips. I mean, we do. What? How do you, first, I, I come to you and I say, I just can't stop thinking about this. I cannot stop thinking about my chips. What would you, what would you, how would you coach me? So the first thing we would do is we would create a plan. So say you want to eat your chips Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and not every single day. We would have you create that ahead of time with the part of your brain called your prefrontal cortex. Mm. So this is the the part of your brain that's going to say like, Hey, tomorrow I'm going to have a salad and I'm going to have some chips. And it, it plans your best life versus if we were to do it in the moment, you would want the chips every single day, as long as they were in the cabinet. So first we make that plan and then practicing following through on it is the harder part. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we want to really like slow it down because it feels almost automatic. Sometimes we just go straight to the chips without any thought, but there is a thought driving you to get those chips. So the first thing we would do is figure out everything that you're thinking about them, right? Like these are my favorite. These make me feel better. I always eat these, these time of day. There's all these little beliefs in your mind that are creating Mm. so much desire for these chips. The next thing we would do is practice feeling that desire without needing to act on it. So just sitting and being uncomfortable and it just allowing that emotion in your body without having to act on it. So those are kind of the first three things. We're really figuring out everything your brain's telling you and practicing letting those uncomfortable emotions be in your body and, um, yeah. And then, and then you'll be able to follow your plans so much better once we've practiced all of that. And how long does it take in your mind and with this program, how long does it take to create kind of a new way of being? So I typically work with somebody for three months and I feel like that's a really, it gives you a solid basis, but at the same time, it's, it's like going to the gym. It's something that we're always going to be practicing. Um, we, we can't just like do this and then stop and expect everything to be perfect forever, but learning how much power your thoughts have learning how to feel your emotions. I feel like if you're really practicing that for three months, then you can apply it. It's like not a big deal and you know exactly how to handle it for when all the things come up in the future. Hmm. So for you right now, how often are you working out? Um, not, not often at all. Um, I, have we gone I'm, the other way? <laughs> I've, I've actually, it's been a lot of growth for me to be able mm. to go the other way. Um, at the beginning of 2020, I considered not my, like having a resolution be, you can't work out for the whole year. Mm. Um, which I decided against because I was like, well, it's healthy, like overall, mm. but not being that, not having that like obsessive control over it has been so much growth for me. So like Mm -hmm. yesterday I went for a long hike, but besides that, like it's not as you have to go today or twice a day or, um, yeah. So I work out a lot less, which has actually been great for me to like release that. And I've definitely released a lot of like the fear of gaining weight, which has helped me so much like in my journey. Mm, That's so great. I love to hear that. And I also, I do think it's important for people to realize, as you said, that there are going to be those moments where, you know, you, you realize I can cut something out altogether, but, but there's a healthy way to do it. And avoidance isn't, isn't on the right track either. Right. And that, that's right. so, that's so spot on really, really good. Um, so in terms of what you are working on these days, what are you, what you have your, your coaching program or uh, tell us more about what you do to help people with this. Yeah. So I'm right now, I'm the director of marketing at the life coach school. Mm -hmm. I got kind of so involved there. Um, so I love working for the school and helping more people find out about us and change their life. Like I changed mine with the tools that they offer. So 
that's super fun. And then I also coach active people who overeat. Um, so we do like one-on-one coaching on the phone, similar to how we're talking, kind of talk through the issues that they're having and then find the root cause of it. So instead of telling you, well, just don't have the chips in the house, right? Obvious answer. (laughs) We don't, we don't want that. We want the chips to be in the house and you to have that self-control of, I decide when I'm having the chips, they don't decide when they want to be eaten. Right. And working on all of that thought and emotion work tied into it to help you create the exact goal that you want. Choice is so important. And when we start to realize that we all have the choice, we all have a choice to do something or not to do something. Mm -hmm. And we can decide which choice we're going to make. And that all of a sudden throws that back where, yeah, that's pretty powerful. That's an empowering way to look at things when we feel like life is getting out of control. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's, yeah, that, that really is, that's so true. And so if people, um, right now are interested in reaching out to you, how would they do that? Yeah. So, um, if for me, you can find me on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is at Felicia Anna Brocolo. Um, it should come up, but it's kind of difficult to spell. Um, also I would encourage you to check out the life coach school, um, at the lifecoachschool.com forward slash unstuck. And there's a little mini movie series there to learn about the model, um, that I brought you through and a lot of really good information to help your listeners with any problem that they're going through. That's awesome. And then I always do a series of rapid fire questions. All right. Are you ready? Uh, Let's do it. (laughs) Let's. (laughs) Okay. Number one, Zoom calls dressed head to toe or waist up? Um, Waist up with, I just always go with leggings. They're just so comfy. I get it. I get it. Especially those really soft ones. Okay. How often do you wash your hair? Ooh, this is a um, loaded question. (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, if you guys can't see me and you're just listening, I have very curly hair. Honestly, it's about once a week. Okay. And do you use dry shampoo in between? Just (laughs) Nope. 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 Just let those those curls go. I love it. And then uh, favorite podcast besides this one. This one's first, of course. <laughs> um, and then I have to just go with the Life Coach School podcast. It's mm. it's really good. Awesome. Okay. I love this beauty product and the name of it. Okay. So my go-to thing is skin oil. Like instead of moisturizer, I love using an oil. Um, and I wrote down the name of it. It is, I get it off Amazon. It's just called Skin Therapy Oil for Face. Yeah. And I was a little skeptical in the beginning because it's like putting oil on your face, but Mm -hmm. I love it. I think it's the best moisturizer. Swear by it. And it doesn't make you break out even though it's oil. No, Mm, that's a, that's that's a good one. That's That's a tricky part. Yeah. And and then a backyard barbecue or a schwanky cocktail party. Ooh, let's go with schwanky cocktail party because it's classy. And then your go-to poolside drink. Um, I mean, pina colada is the first thing that comes to mind, but I think more realistically, I like a margarita. Mm, Both of those are so darn good. Yeah. And then a bonus question. Okay. What does a powerhouse of possibility mean to you? So I think this, I, I feel this so hard once I learned that I, I could really accomplish any goal I set my mind to, I feel like that's kind of said a lot and I never really believed it until I started setting and accomplishing huge goals. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, hold on. If I could accomplish literally anything, what would I want? And I feel like that moment is such a powerhouse of possibility Mm -hmm. of, I know I can like set out and accomplish anything I want. So like, what do I want to do? I agree. I like that. Well, Felicia, I just, you know what? You're awesome. I am so, you know, just excited to have you here today. It was enlightening to hear your story, your honesty, your vulnerability in terms of even sharing it and saying, hey, yeah, this is, this is the way it was working out three hours a day, 
you know, fasting for 36 hours and being honest with that so that people can hear, yeah, but you were there and now you're here Mm -hmm. and your journey is as you know, you've explained it's, it's ongoing. You're still, you know, massaging, you know, the corners and trying to figure out how to get to that next place where you can't just avoid, right? You got to look it in the eye. You got to say, Hey, this is what I am. And this is where I want to be. It's really great. I really appreciate you being here and sharing this experience. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me and for listening. All right. We'll see you next time. Thanks again. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you felt a connection to this episode of the Silver Lined Relaunch, please head over to iTunes now. It would mean so much to me if you would leave a good review and help others find Silver Linings as well. And don't forget, you can have immediate access to all of the bonuses and notes from the show today in our treasure chest which you have access to for free by texting 55444 and typing in treasure chest. Or you could go to our private Facebook group, The Relaunch Effect, Living a Life You Love. Together we've hit the reset button for you, turning your transitions into a transformation. Until next time, don't forget, There's always a silver lining.